it's hard to really distinguish what, you know, the, the flavor of saffron, I mean, it's because it's pretty unique to itself. Floral is the best way can, best way to describe it. It does have a, it has an interesting, like, little bitter aftertaste, which kind of plays with you a little bit. Regular saffron, you wouldn't be able to use as a garnish. You have to cook it. You'd have to cook it and put it into the sauce, you know, and the color would come through. The flavor would come through. Not as intense. So what have you used saffron? How have you used it in the past? I'm gonna have a multitude of ways. I use it all the time whenever I make bouillabaisse. base. Actually, in the bouillabaisse balls that we're serving off of the meaty balls mobile, we are using it uh, in the vegetables that we make for the for the sandwich. It's Philip. Uh, what are the oysters that you sent me? Uh, the pink iPhone is my wife's, it's not my own, okay? Let's get that straight right now. So we're working with uh, Delaware Bay oysters here. You gotta be very, very cautious when working with oysters that you don't, as you're opening it, that you don't go through it and jab yourself in the hand and go to the hospital. And then we wanna save that juice. We're gonna remove the entire oyster into this plastic container. That's a beautiful one right there. Lobster's already cooked. Just gonna take it. And you could butter poach this. Certainly would be a good way to do it, but we're just, just gonna take a very thin shaving of butter and just kind of drape it over the top of it. There are, it's a cauliflower flan. I think it might even be a good uh just heat the heat it up on that. As you can see, I'm kind of working this dish out as we speak. Uh -huh. Curry paste, which uh, is made with a traditional uh, Indian masala. What I do is I take uh, onions, garlic, peeled garlic, and ginger, liquefy it in a blender with, with water, reduce it all the way down until it's a, uh, till there's no liquid at all remaining and the vegetables start to get some color to it. Really takes a good deal of time to get there. And then at that point, I add the curry paste to it, the curry powder. Uh, this is a fine one, I got it from Devon. This is probably a little uh, more than one would need to do at home. But uh, I think it's how I miss being an anal retentive chef. <laughs> off on the oysters until like pretty much a last possible second to put them in. Oysters are really delicate and they overcook very, very quickly. One of the things I used to always do when I'd go out on a first date with a girl is I would take her out and we'd order some mussels and we'd sit there and talk and I'd show her how it looks like a woman woman's vagina and uh, she would it was always interesting however her response would be I could always tell right away how our date was going to go I guess your wife must have passed the test my wife keeps kosher so she doesn't uh, need it at all <laughs> so you need to have that plump look if they're uh, shriveled and dried skip them go around with the sauce Then we're just going to liberally uh, place a bunch of the saffron around. Poached lobster and oysters with a cauliflower flan, a curry sauce, Granny Smith apples, and freeze-dried saffron. Yep. I love the apples in it. The saffron is actually a powerful flavor and it carries itself through the entire thing. Like it's one of the first flavors you taste and it carries on to the end. It accentuates a curry, accentuates a cauliflower big time. And uh, you know, it's big enough that it, it even uh, cuts through, you can taste it over the lobster and the seafood and the oysters as well. I chose the Bulls Balls because uh, not many people are doing them around the town and they're challenged to do because they get tough quickly. So you gotta cook them perfectly. You know, for a guy it's really tough to take a bite into it without wincing and cringing your, at, at your, buckling at your knees.